I don't know if you're ready, but I am. We're about to hear from a anointed, appointed prophetess, God filled. I can't call her Lynn. She's majestic. She's dynamic. She's enthusiastic. She's a singer. She's gorgeous. She's a diva. I am preaching. I know that you are in the room. I know that you have decided to take a seat in this room. It is evident because we see the overflow. It is evident because we are manifesting and watching and observing the scripture being taken that says, bring two fish and five loaves to me. Lord, right now in this moment, my prayer is that you would cause my mouth to speak what you would have me to speak. Father, even now we thank you for the spirit of the breaker in this room that has the intention of breaking whatever is not like you and replacing it with who you are. Yes. Yes. Lord, I pray now in the name of Jesus for the spirit of deliverance to have its way in this room. Yes. Allow the mentalities of your women to be delivered today because of this word. I give you the glory, I give you the honor, and I ask you, Holy Spirit, now, to allow your fire to move in this place. The purifier's fire, the refiner's fire. I pray in the holy matchless name of Jesus Christ that the light would permeate so greatly out of these women that somebody becomes more curious about what they're doing at 149 Springfield Avenue. And that the whispers will begin to cease about any kind of demise concerning this house. I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Because you are awesome and you are mighty. And without you, we would be nothing. Now, Lord, let your word begin to come forth. We give you the glory, we give you the honor, and we give you the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. All right. Um, so here, here, here we are at the Women of Influence luncheon. And there has been such a stir here lately because we are dealing with some situations socially that would have us feel uncomfortable, they would have us feel uptight, they would have us feel tension, they would have us feel disappointment, and some would even suggest they would have us to feel despair and hopelessness. Yeah. 
And yet and still, God anoints the leaders of this house to make a grand announcement, women of influence, it is time to come together. Hmm. I find it very interesting how God speaks to leaders in calamity to tell the people to be even tighter than they once were. I find it interesting that uh, even in the biblical times, after a battle had been lost, God would still recommend that his children stick together. God would still recommend that his children come together. I find it interesting that when we walk through the Bible where we see uh, winners and losers, uh, but nevertheless, even when they lose, they're still victorious. I find it interesting that God calls victorious people to stand together even after they have lost so much. I, I find it interesting that even those uh, Israelites that they said, you know what? They are a minority. We are greater than them because we have wealth. We're greater than them because we have education. We're greater than them because we have beauty. We're greater uh, than them because uh, what runs in our bloodline means that we have generational wealth. I find it interesting that when God looks at a winner, he does not always count their financial status. I find it interesting. Hmm. that when God looks at a winner, now this is not in my text today, but I find it interesting that when God looks at a winner, he does not take into account uh, whether they've won a battle or not, but he takes into account the heart of the person that he was dealing with, which means there is a strong difference between a, a victor and a fighter. There is a strong difference, my God, right, between a warrior and a victor, because watch this, a victor can always fight and even if they they lose, they still are victorious. Because at the end of the day, even if they might not have won the battle, they know that they shall win the war. Yeah. I find it interesting yeah. that even after uh, we continue to watch our sisters lose the battle to cancer, lose the battle to mental health, lose the battle to divorce, lose the battle to love relationships and intimacy, lose uh, the battle even in a presidency, I find it very interesting that even after the black woman is deemed a loser, she's still more victorious than anybody you ever seen that the planet. I find it interesting. Yeah, I find that very interesting that even uh, the Bible says that uh, the more they uh, press them, that the greater they grew. I find it interesting that even though they might press us black women and even though they might push us black women, uh, if we go back into the historical context, they have whipped us, they have stabbed us in the back, they've cut our hair, they've used our body even for medical purposes against our will. I find it interesting that no matter how many scientific studies they do on us, they still can't figure out why we're so victorious. I find it interesting. They still, they still, they still, you see, scientists still can't put their finger on it. What makes that black woman so great? Why? Why does her hair grow to the sky? Why does her backside naturally extend? Why does her spine seem to handle the weight of her family? And still, even after she cries about it, she's still victorious. I don't understand what it is about that black woman. Why her nails are so pretty. Why her feet are so anointed. I don't understand why. Come on, girl. We tried, we tried to inject crack cocaine into her society and she's still victorious. We tried to make her like alcohol, but she's still victorious. We tried to abort her babies, but she's still victorious. We tried to take out her womb, but she's still victorious. We tried the mastectomy, but she's still victorious. We've even tried to make her blind, but she's still somehow victorious. I find it. 
and Lord God, any of you ladies in here, but the next time you are confused because you think you're looking at a loss, I want you to remember you have the anatomy of a victor. Yes. I want you to remember you have the anatomy and the DNA of a victorious one. I find it interesting, church. Hmm. <laughs> This is not in my text right now, but I'm moving the way God wants me to. I find it, I find it. It's just so interesting to me that God will make a mandate of the loser that you still got to come together. Isn't it something that God will place a responsibility on the people that look like they're losing and he won't put a responsibility on those who look like they're winning. There is something close to God's heart. That's right. When you think you've got the underdog pegged. There is something uh, to God's heart, ladies. That's why, that's why, that's why the next time they try to tell you you're the inferior sex, I want you to say quietly, we know that to be a lie. I want that's you right. to remember there is nothing inferior about you. The only thing about you is that you're different. You're not the inferior sex, you're the different sex. Which now leads us to our conversation today. Because when you understand that you are the victor, there are some things, there is a game plan that goes along with being the victor. There are some foundational principles, coach. <laughs> that goes along with being the victor. And now that I'm looking at her, thank you, Jesus, because I just got the imagery. When a team loses, they still got to show up to practice. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> They still, Reverend Williams, they got to, they got to, even after you take a loss, I don't know why God has me here, but we're moving in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, even yes. Even after you take a loss, and I mean the greatest loss of all time. I'm talking about, I'm talking about your opponent did everything to play dirty. I'm talking about you supposed to be on the court. It's supposed to be a clean game, and they jabbing you, and they stealing the ball, and they stealing your techniques, and they trying to do everything to replicate what you do on the court. But at the end of the day, even after this loss, you still got to go to practice. That's right. That's right. Yes. And so, Reverend Jasmine, what is the whole conversation today surrounding uh, uh, the victor? Well, God wants us to have a conversation concerning don't alter the altar. Mm. Oh. Okay. All right. yeah. And for those of you who don't always touch a book, <laughs> it ain't no judgment. I ain't judging you. But what I'm saying is don't alter, A-L-T-E. The altar, A L T A. Oh, very good. I hear the church in here today. So here, here, here we are now, coming down the main path. And something we know is that alterations are the process by which someone may or may not make necessary adjustments to a document, a plan, or garment to suit their circumstances better. When we make alterations to a garment, it is because it is either too big or too small for the body that is currently presented. Come on and preach. When we alter plans, it may be for several significant reasons, including but not limited to calendar misinformation, time constraints, or financial adjustments to ensure proper compensation. Alterations are often necessary and common to everyday mechanisms of life. 
Alterations are typically required if we anticipate one's ability to be content with the conditions that have been established. Despite what some might believe, alterations are a consistent necessity in the human life experience. In fact, alterations are even necessary in our spiritual lives. Specifically, alterations are essential to the lives of women, godly women who follow the laws and plans of Jesus Christ, the greatest Messiah of all time. Throughout history, women have constantly altered themselves. <laughs> Oh, come on, y'all know all about it, right? Y'all know all about it. And unfortunately for my generation, it's becoming increasingly worse. Right? Women have to alter their appearance, their bodies, their families, their labels, their identities, their thoughts, their recipes, their hairstyles, their attire, their pleasurable desires, their etiquette, their health, their complexions, and so much more. Women are often demanded to alter. Yes. 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 You can't hardly wear a nail polish good because somebody got an opinion. Well, why you put that on your skin? <laughs> You know, all these years I've known you, I wouldn't think you would wear that color. It's a new year. It's a whole new year, but, 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 but we always got to make alterations. Girl, why are you doing a two straight? You going natural? Mm. Couldn't be me. I need a perm. Okay. Now we both know information I never had. You can clap about that. Right? What you need to do is spank that child because that child would know better if you would spank that. Okay. But did you carry that child for nine months to know how to speak to that child and get it on? Right? We always have to make alterations. Because if it, it, if it isn't one thing to alter, it's another. Right? I wish my skin looked like hers. I wish my hair was like hers. I wish my figure was like hers. Well, why did he pick her and not me? I got to alter something else. Well, why did they pick them for the job and not me? I got to alter my resume. Well, why is it that they chose this one to serve this year and not me? I got to alter my prayer lifestyle. Something is always whether somebody is externally suggesting the alteration or we provide an internal alteration, we are always demanded of making alterations. Right? So now, we've even had to alter the ways in which we worship. <laughs> the ways we worship and praise the very Lord who has saved us. The Lord who has redeemed us. The Lord who has transformed us. The Lord who has empowered us. The Lord who has elevated us. The Lord who has justified us. The Lord who has atoned for our sins. We've had to alter the freedom by which we worship and praise the Lord because for some of us we are busy being ashamed of our method instead of being concerned about worshiping the king. We have decided to place our praise in worship. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yeah. In what the Spirit would call an upright coffin. You might not be six feet under, but you're sitting in the pew like you're in a coffin. <laughs> Every time the praise team says, come on and lift your hands. You... <laughs> Tell the 
praise and worship leader. I'm gonna wait. I don't I don't like who's singing today. I don't like the songs they singing. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna still go to church, but I'm gonna wait. And the next reason I can have this conversation with you, watch this. I've been that person. Oh. There is a God that generated the conversation of the alteration way before women touched the earth. That's right. That's right. Okay. As a matter of fact, ladies, women were crafted out of alteration. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a yeah. 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 <laughs> women, women, we, we, we were crafted out of alterations. Uh, hey. <laughs> I mean, you know the story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell us something. Right? Uh, yes, tell us something. Yes. Tell us something. 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 You know what I'm saying? And the Lord is minding his business, being the Lord. He's lording, you know what I'm saying? And the Lord looks at the man, and the Bible says that he saw man, and he was like, he is not good for him to be wrong. You know, God looks at the man, and he goes, ooh. You know, you too good by yourself, buddy. I got to alter this plan, because I thought I was going to deal with one man, but I realized I need a woman. his body. Yeah. 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 Teach, girl. Yeah. Teach it. He alters his skeletal structure. Mm. We know that bones are indicative of the promise. Mm. So what he does is, being the type of God that he is, he takes a promise out of the man and molds it into a woman and we get what is called Eve and she embodies a physical promise of God because she's made out of a rib which means ladies you are a walking promise why are you walking around pathetic you're a walking promise why are you behaving like a walking pathetic you're a walking promise Better work. What? <laughs> look at look at look at how he makes Adam. He creates him from the dust. Uh -huh. But for you, he alters Adam to make you a physical embodiment of a promise. So I, listen, we, we we still in the text. We moving. We moving. We moving. What was the text? We're coming to the text. I haven't even gone. Okay, we know. <laughs> So 
to convince you that not only are you inferior, but that creation is untrue. Uh -huh. Anything to deceive you. Right? Anything to make you believe that how you were created, no matter who your parents are, however your parents came together to make you, you are still an extension of the promise. Hey. Right? So, there are, however, once we understand these alterations, we have to ask ourselves, what do these alterations have to do with the construction of the altar? How does one connect the concept of alterations to the holy altar of God? Well, first, we must observe the Old Testament text in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verses 21 to 26, where the Lord gives over to the priests the exact methods by which he wants an altar to be built. That's right. You will see, uh, you see, while altar explains that of adjustments, altar, A-R, explains a physical location. The altar of the Lord during the Old Testament is meant to serve as a physical location for those who are clear about the practice of daily sanctification. The altar is meant to be a location where the children of God see something in the physical longitude and worship their God latitude. And when the two begin to meet, what we have is the center point for worship and praise in the presence of God. You see, the altar is holy. The altar is pure. The altar is refuge. The altar is solace. The altar is a place of worship, praise, sanctification, yeah. safety, relationship, conversation, and prayer. The altar is where we as women are blessed to have an encounter with a pure, righteous, and upstanding father who, albeit, fights for us all because we have chosen to be altered in his presence. In the Old Testament, the altar was a place that could only be built and approached by men. Yeah. Yeah. Old Testament. Old Testament. Old Testament. At least, this is what the finite extent of what could be recorded due to man's limitation and to the context by which some lived. However, thanks be unto God who gives us the victory and causes us to triumph. There is a New Testament. New Testament. Yes. That introduces us to the very individual hey. that will alter our perspective of the altar. Wow. Let's take a look at Hebrews chapter 10. <laughs> you see me? I'm glad when a sister says she's seen me. sweat this hair out for the <laughs> I said I'd be your choir director, Mom. I'm moving at the time. Let me move. Let me move. Pastor, I'm doing all right. All right. Okay. Look, you got to check with your leadership. You know, be good about it. This is training ground for me, so I get all I can while I'm here. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 11. I'm going to read it in the King James Version, okay, everybody? But read it in the version that you can understand. That's right. All right? Okay. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. <laughs> but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. 
For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Yes, yes, yes. Whereof the Holy Ghost, my God, also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, this is the covenant yes. that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Amen. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us, through the veil that is to say his flesh. And having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Yes, yes, having yes. our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Here we go, verse 23. Let us hold fast. Yes. The profession of our faith Come on, girl. without wavering, mm. for he is faithful that yes. promise. Yes. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Not, watch this first lady, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Yes. As the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, my God in Zion, and so much the more, as ye see the day approaching. When we read this text, what we see here is that the author is letting us know that in the old days, my God, my God, I hope somebody can walk with me. <laughs> in the old days, there was a priest that had to stand in the gap for That's you. Right. <laughs> in the old days, there was a man who had to be holy enough with a holy animal yeah. to sacrifice pure blood to lay it on the altar. <laughs> you see, in the Old Testament, on, there was somebody that had to physically be in place to make sure that you and I would not be swallowed up by Jesus or God his father or because we chose to be sinful and deceitful in the Old Testament we were even instructed in Exodus to make an altar of the earth so that we could have a location to stand in place to begin to worship God so that we could continue to participate in sanctification and purification and consecration Oh, but in the New Testament, I feel my help now. In the New Testament, there was a man. And he sent his son by the name of Jesus Christ. They sent him into a little manger. He was wrapped in swaddling clothes. And in the 33rd year of his ministry, he decided to go into the garden of the city. And when he got on his knees and prayed, the Bible records that he
says, go on to the altar. Go on to the altar. What am I trying to say? Reverend Jasmine, what did you mean? Don't alter the altar. Don't alter the methods that you use that got you this far. Don't alter your prayer time. Don't alter your worship time. Don't alter your praise time. Don't alter getting in the presence with his people. Don't alter getting into the house of God. Don't alter the things that got you victorious thus far. alteration. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. 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 Now we got Christians. Now we're supposed to be the sharpest ones, but we're looking like the world. The world used to look to us because of our educational capabilities. We were smarter. We were more agile. We knew how to put our children in classes and give them speaking opportunities because they were speaking in the church first. Yeah. 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 We gave them standing presence in the church. We gave them practices in the church. Amen. We found reasons to train our children. And watch this, and the parents agreed to work with the church to train yeah. their child. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the church made sure not to abuse the child. That's right. That's right. See, both parties have a responsibility. Yeah. That's good, that's good, that's good. Both parties. Church folk didn't come in and be like, I'm, well, I ain't doing it. I don't know who they're going to get to do it because I ain't doing it. Does that sound like the Spirit of God to you? No. Let's address it. Yeah. Because it is a mumbling presence yes, that has got some of our synthetic wigs all turned around. Wow. It's That's synthetic right. in your attitude. You right. like that That's wig. Right. Get it together. When you get a human hair wig, maybe you can be a little nasty, but when it's synthetic, it's synthetic. It's synthetic. You better make it like your wig, Spiff. I even I'll suffice for a blended wig. Human ain't synthetic. Was it better than you mean? Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Why sometimes you need a sister 
the light, Sweet Lou. Uh, <laughs> they call her Sweet Lou for a reason. A whole reason. A whole mighty glorified reason. Uh-huh. You need that sister that be like, it's okay, you're not sweet today, but I got enough sugar for the both of us. Luella and Sweet Lou, Luella got enough sugar for Trinity and Jasmine, okay? <laughs> That's right. We are not a stingy kind of women. <laughs> but we don't got these lace front wigs and they are a little too tight. <laughs> and we don't lost our minds. We ain't stingy. <laughs> we ain't mean. No. We ain't cold hearted. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. We're we loving. Remind you of who you are. Yeah. That's right. You're not supposed to be like the world. Yeah. yeah. That's right. That's and right. being like the world is more than you being in a club. I'm talking about your attitude. Come on. That's right. Your attitude. Yes. You better work. I know a lot of Christians that be in the club and be in the juke joint and they just as sweet and happy. That was me. That was me. Because everything in their cup okay. ain't always wine or liquor. Sometimes they just want to dance. That's right. And they ain't even stingy. Right. That's right. Yeah. We've lost our smile. That's right. Since when have you let money dictate your joy? Yes. Come on now. Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. We lose our smile and then we'll go, I need injections. No, you need to smile in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you need to pray and ask the Lord to restore your joy. Yeah. Restore your strength. Restore your excitement. Restore your passion. Restore your zeal. Restore your creativity. Restore your eyesight. Restore, restore, restore. Yes, right. That's right. That's right. When you remember, right? Uh huh. The foundation of your altar. That's right. That's right. Tell us. That's right. Tell us. Your altar is in Christ Jesus. That's right. And visitors, this is likewise for you. That's right. Yeah, that's right. You're right. I'm closing now, but don't alter the altar. That's right. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Oh, 
of the functionality and the foundational principles that have allowed you to be here in this place today. Thank you, Jesus.